So obviously that was quite theoretical and now what we want to do is see this in practice. So let's take a look. If we go into the queue manager and obviously we're, we're, we're running here in WebSphere MQ. We are going down to the queue manager. We'll click on the queue manager. We can see all the details for it. We're connecting over 9997. That is a secure port. And really what we wanted to do here was look at the channels because as we've been talking about, there are two different types of channels. There's the MCA and there's the MQI. And take a look at this. So we, if we open up the CFM cfqm.nonssl.servercon that should look familiar remember we did this in the live messaging video if you double click on this and you look through its properties take a look at this right here you see something called mca and specifically you see something called the mca user and we had said in the last video that that was mqm and essentially this is the default user that this channel is going to run under. And that's important because as we said, that particular user is going to be replaced by, potentially, not always, but potentially uh, and frequently, replaced by whatever user is running on the other end of this connection. So MQM could be administrator, potentially. Now that MQM though, whatever you enter here, this username must exist in the system, in the MQ system. So, you know, as we said before, that was basically the QMB. That's the right side of our diagram from before. Any, in any case, you see MCA user listed there. And then you have, you know, your other, your other tabs here for that, for that section. Now, you also have something called the CFQM SSL server connection. And if you look down here, you'll see that the channel type in both of these cases are server connection. And we're gonna talk about that in, again in a second. But again, same thing here, you're going to see MCA listed there. Now, we're gonna come back to this idea, but if you now go down to, the, well, you go down to the client connections and you see this connection here, this is MQI, right? We're talking about now a client connection. And remember that in MQI, you have a client and you have a server. And this is why you are not, and that's a different thing from MCSA, right? And this is why you're not seeing MCA listed here because this is a client connection. A client connection doesn't use MCA. And that's really important. Now, separately, we had talked about these client authentic or channel authentication records. And sure enough, here they are. This is a list of what they look like. So if we were to double click here on this particular one, we will see that this is what's called a user map. And just like we had talked about, this is going to, the idea behind this is to map the user from system one or the left side of our diagram to the right side. And then specifically, it's gonna do that based on this address. Well, it's gonna do that part based on something we'll see in a second, but it's going to look at the address. This means here in practice is essentially the IP address and the star means all IP addresses. Now the client user, this is something slightly different. The client user is what we are saying that the other end is going to provide. And again, we're gonna look at this in a little bit more detail later. For now, we wanna look at the extended tab because take a look at this, the mapping property. So now what we're doing is we're saying that the user source is going to be a map and that that map is going to use the MCA user ID, so MQM, and then our we're gonna check client connections as Q manager. This is the important thing. MCA user is MQM. And look at the client user, it's also MQM. Again, we'll talk about that in a second. But this is exactly those components that we were looking at in the prior video. Now, remember that I said, if you look at the client user, you're going to see an entry here for MQM. And the question is, well, what, why are we seeing that? What this means is, remember, the we are in the channel authentication records. These are like firewall rules. And this is essentially saying that if the client presents itself as client user ID MQM, then do whatever it says in extended, which means user source, let's do a map, let's map MQM onto MQM, and then let it run from there. So this is, let me show you another way. 
since we're looking at the channel authentication records, this is obviously the GUI, it's the MQ Explorer. Let me show you another way to see that client user ID and also the whole channel authentication records through the non-GUI interface. And that would look like this. This is just a screenshot of me going into run MQSC, as we've already seen in a previous video. And I just typed in display the channel authentication, CHL auth. That is our channel authentication records, the CAR, the thing that we've been talking about in the MQ Explorer. And this is how you would see it in an MQSC, that is the run MQSC, uh, run MQSC uh, interface. So this is basically the, just the graph, the non-graphical the, the non-GUI, the textual-based interface. And it really, you're looking at the same information, right? We have client user, and it's MQM, and that is going, and the MCA user, which is MQM, and all addresses, so the all IP addresses, and you get the time that this was set up, the check client as queue manager, and we get to see that it is a user map that's happening here, and the channel authentication, right? So th these are the same pieces of information that we have really been looking at. And then if you'd like to see this at the Knowledge Center, here it is, mapping a client asserted user ID to an MCA user user ID. And sure enough, ensure that the channel authentication records are enabled. So this is alter Q manager C HL auth. We haven't really talked about this, but this is this is what happened when MQ updated from version seven to eight. And the there are these three default channel authentication rules. We haven't covered that, but we'll, we'll we can cover that soon. And anyway, you just want to make sure that that's enabled in eight. Okay, well, take a look at this. You, it says we need to set a channel authentication record, the CAR that we've been talking about, using the MQSC command set channel auth or the PCF command we're not going to do. For example, you can issue this M MQSC command. So again, we are running run MQSC to, in order to issue this MQSC command. You set the channel authentication to some name, some, gen, some channel name, and then you, you tell it you want to do the mapping, and you're going to give a particular client user uh, ID, one that the application might provide here. So, and then you give it the user source, you're saying that it's going to do a map. So, and then you use the MCA user to do the, the actual map. So you're saying, where is it going to map to? And this is really all part of doing the authentication at the at the channel. So to be clear, we're talking about hardening at the channel object here. 